Hi, hello, hi. So today I want to talk a little bit about sex, disability, asexuality, and autism. I know that's a lot, a lot of things, just sort of like, okay, anything else you want to throw in there? But no, I think we're good. So, why? Uh, <laughs> well, I am someone with a physical disability. I have EDS, which is a connective tissue disorder, causes me to have dislocations amongst other things on a daily basis. I'm also autistic and touch repulsed for the most part, and I am also asexual and trans. So let's talk about sex. Trigger warning, talking about sex. So probably mentions of anatomy and sexual things. Anyway, probably should have saved this topic for like a sponsored video where I get sex toys or something, but honestly, who cares? But firstly, there's a whole obstacle of overcoming the stigma surrounding all of these things. So overcoming the stigma of being a trans man who's in a relationship with a cis woman was an obstacle of its own. Realizing that disabled people can be sexual. Also, I'm wearing this appropriate shirt that says disabled people are hot. I can leave a link to the shirt in the description, and if the shirt's not up anymore, I'll leave a link to the Twitter account of Andrew Gersa, who's the uh, disabled activist who made the shirts and who created the hashtag. But yeah, for starters, it took me a long time to feel desirable. As a trans person, I felt as though I were like an incomplete lover or like my partner was making an exception by being with me. No one would actually want me the way I am. All of that internalized transphobia stuff. But as a disabled person as well, I faced those obstacles. Being physically disabled means that it's hard for me to not be in pain <laughs> and to have someone on top of me or be on top of someone, like not to get graphic, but just, you know, you have to be in physical proximity with someone to have sex. So that was a hard obstacle to overcome and to understand like, what do I do when like every joint in my body is subluxing repeatedly? How do I be intimate with this person? And then as an autistic person who is touch repulsed, how do you have sex without touching? So there's a variance in these symptoms. Sometimes my joints won't be as bad some days. Sometimes my upper body won't be so bad, so I could use my upper body more. Sometimes my lower body won't be so bad, so I could use my lower body more. And some days my stimulation level is okay, so being touched isn't that bad. But also there are ways to be touched pleasantly. You have to just sort of experiment. And it's not always sexual, that's the thing. Intimacy in a relationship doesn't have to be sex all the time. We'll get we'll get to sex, we'll get there. But I'm just saying you could be intimate with someone without necessarily having sex. That's that's a thing. And there's no reason why that should be less valuable than having sex with someone. Does that make sense? Like I've said before in my videos, I really love being drawn on. So my girlfriend draws on me a lot and I draw on her and I paint on her. You'll see that on my channel. She loves to have her hair played with, so I'll play with her hair or I'll massage her back or anything like that. Any ways in which you like to be sensually touched could be just as intimate and just as meaningful as being touched sexually. Your, your relationship doesn't have to be what you think it has to be. It's whatever feels fulfilling to you and your partner. Also, if you do feel like being sexual but you don't want to touch someone or be touched, may I suggest sex toys? There are a lot of sex toys out there. There are sex toys that move all by themselves. You just have to sort of hold it. So you could get some insertable sex toys that move on their own. They have like tips that move in and out all by themselves, that they vibrate, they spin, they, they do a lot. Uh, they even get like the heat up. If you're with a partner who has an Audi sex organ instead of an any sex organ, if you get what I'm saying. There are also sleeve toys that have like a thing on the end where you press it and there could be suction, there could be vibration, again it could be heated, like you could use these toys on your partner so that you're not the one who has to be touched but if they want to be touched it's kind of this like in between where you're both happy and you're both engaged but nobody is compromising their boundaries, you know? You could get creative. Sex doesn't have to be the cis, het, able-bodied idea that we usually have in mind when we think of sex. It is whatever feels good to you and your partner. And when it comes to feeling desirable, again, I don't know if you saw my shirt, but uh, there's no reason why disabled people can't be hot. Okay, disabled people are hot. It's just you're gonna have to get over that one. Personally, I had to overcome the stigma of like, oh, when I'm in a wheelchair, I'm shorter than my girlfriend. But then I remember, who cares? If I have a partner who doesn't care about that and I don't care about that, then why Why should I? Like, who cares what other people think? They're not, they're not in your relationship. It's just you. And I know it's easier said than done. Trust me, trust me, trust me. I know. <laughs> I'm just telling you, these are the positive affirmations, I guess, that I tell myself. These are the things I repeat to myself. And again, my relationship is only about me and my partner feeling whole together. It's not about anyone else. When it comes to asexuality, again, a lot of the other things apply. Like you could touch someone sensually. It doesn't have to be sexually. They could be the one receiving. You could be the one like, you know, you could use like sex toys on them and stuff like that. You don't have to be the one receiving, I guess, if, if that makes any sense. Also, asexual people do have sex, so don't 
feel bad about that. Asexuality just means lack of sexual attraction towards others, and it could be to varying degrees as well. Some asexuals are sex repulsed, some asexuals are sex repulsed, but enjoy solo play. If you're with a partner and they like being solo and you like being solo and you like being solo in close proximity to each other, why not? Why can't that be the sexual experience that you have with that person? If you're both having a good time, that's all that matters. So you could do that. For some asexual people, it could just be like they're sex repulsed when it comes to having sex with someone else. And I mean, by definition, if we're talking about like asexual organisms, technically it just means they're sexually reproducing on their own. So I mean, they are doing it by themselves. I'm just saying, if you're gonna get all like science, um, by definition, there's no reason why an asexual entity cannot be sexual with themselves. It, it, it's in the word. It, sexual for one. Anyway, so <laughs> all that to say, you could make room in the bed and in your relationship for disability and for autism and for asexuality and for trans people. None of those things make you less desirable. And if you are with someone who doesn't like those things and it makes you feel bad and it makes them feel bad, I mean, maybe, maybe it's not the healthiest relationship for you. Maybe you should try counseling or maybe seeing other people, who knows? I'm just telling you, it is possible to be in a relationship where both partners feel fulfilled and you still have those boundaries maintained. I'm in that relationship with my girlfriend. This thing exists and it's not miraculous. It's not, it doesn't make either of us heroes. It's just sometimes people mesh well together, you know? And you just, you just have to find the person or the people who mesh well with you. That's it. It's just to give you a little hope that like, it's not hopeless. You don't have to force yourself to do things you're not comfortable with just to make yourself more desirable to others. Relationships don't have to be like that. And I just wanted to show you that relationships that are healthy and that are like this exist. It's a possibility. This, this, this could be you. Uh, anyway, that's, that's it. I, I hope this was something. I hope at least I kept you company and I hope your relationships are going well and they're healthy. And if not, I hope that they're healthy soon. And that's it. I, I appreciate you for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week and you take care of yourselves. All right, thanks. Bye.